Hello and welcome to another episode of Conscious Aging. We are in Conscious Aging, the season number six. So we have done already a lot of these conversations. And if you want to watch them, they are still available in the wisdomfactory.net. I am Heidi Hörnlein and I have created this series and all the other series together with my late husband, Mark Davenport, and he was so much interested in conscious aging. And I remember the certain moment in the integral leadership review that came out a uh, article by a certain Edward Kelly. And he was um, excited about that. He was really inspired and he shared the article. And, you know, and we, we said sooner or later, we will have this Edward Kelly <laughs> in our series. And then Hmm. He chose to die last year. I don't know if he really chose, but he had to. So uh, now I am going on with uh, the series every now and then, because it's not so much my topic as it was his. He was more than 10 years older than me. So, but I continue. And you know what? Today I have Edward Kelly <laughs> with me to talk about the third act. And before we go into the conversation, Edward, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Where you are, where, why you talk about these things and so on. Hi, I do thank you for, and thank you for your invitation to speak with you today and also to mark support and encouragement uh, by redistributing uh, articles that I had written on the third act. Uh, the, 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 the idea, I suppose, came really from uh, the um, looking at the impact of human longevity. And uh, we've always had old people. We, we've never had so many old people. Um, but they're not old anymore in the sense of they're only old as viewed from the old paradigm. They're not old in the sense of uh, of how they're experiencing their lives now. We are not so, old, are we? No. <laughs> so I, I so I, I it, it struck me that there was this you couldn't have this massive uh, sustained change across society called human longevity without it having a profound impact systematically, uh, organizationally but also personally. So, you know, what was society going to do with this big shift to in human longevity? How were organizations going to be impacted by it? And, and what impact would it have on individuals? But I was particularly interested on the individuals. The, 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 so, the social side, you know, society is slowly coming to grips, making some changes. It's playing around with pension ages and uh, attitudes are slowly changing, and I, I, I sort of didn't, I haven't got too involved in that because it's, it's just going to happen over time. When, when you have a situation like now in Japan, where twenty, twenty-five percent of the population are over sixty, they begin to really change attitudes politically and otherwise. So Japan has um, set up this hundred-year life committee. Uh, formed by the government and chaired by the, the prime minister, you know, the hundred year life to look at the impact of human longevity on Japanese society. So they're really taking it on. It's not in Germany. I think there's, you know, Sweden and Italy, other countries where there's an increasingly larger percentage of people over 60 attitudes across the society are beginning to change. Uh, the next thing, organizationally, most organizations don't seem to be making much of a change. So you have all this phenomena of ageism and people not being kind of, you know, I, I find it, it, it's quite ironic, but you go and speak to organizations and you say, oh, uh, you know, how are you getting on with, uh, you know, uh, this impact of human longevity and, uh, they don't, they don't really know what to say. They say, well, you know, we've got a very diverse workforce and we're, we've got a head of, of diversity and inclusion and we've got all these programs. And you say, yeah, well, what about uh, your over 50s employees and over 60s employees? Are you, do you include them? Uh, and, and by and large, they're, they're, they're excluded. 
if you look at how much money the organization spends on people coming into the organization uh, versus people who are in the organization a long time in their 50s and 60s, it's very small. So there's no real significant change at the organizational level. And then at the personal level, people are having to come to terms with this. You know, what am I going to do? Well, you know, I, I it hap- personally, you're going, what are you going to do relationally with people? You know, the average Victorian marriage lasted about 15 years. Hmm. It's now routine for people to be together for 30, 40, some people for 50 years. You know, this is a really new thing. Um, also, your careers are still ending at traditional ages, you know, 60, 65. But people are living so much longer. If you're 65 today, you have a 50% chance of living to 90. So it's like this whole this whole undefined period, which is not like your second act in life. And it's not really old age and sort of coming up towards the end of life. So what is it? So that's where the whole third act came in. That there was this new phenomenon of our time, a new third act in life that uh, was going to have this, you know, this is a direct cause of human longevity, but it had, creates a real kind of crisis, not only at the social level and organization level, but for the person, the individual level too. So what are you going to do and what are you going to be in this new third act of your life that could last 20 to 25 years. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the motivation behind, um, uh, you know, the third act is to come to a a conscious recognition that there's been this fundamental change and it's going to have this direct impact. And it's a real challenge for people of this age and stage to take that on and, and see what it means for them. And uh, so I then began facilitating that sort of inquiry and particularly facilitating programs that would support people in transition from their second act to their third Mm -hmm. act. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the last five years or so. So that's how you do your transition from the second to the third, being active and uh, take care for the third act people? Yeah, it's, it's sort of to... It's really to create a framework of inquiry for people. It's not particularly advice driven or it doesn't really talk that much about finances or health necessarily. It's more about an internal inquiry as to, well, you know, it's like getting an upgrade. Now, where, where am I now? You know, like, how did I get here and, and where am I going? So those kind of questions. Okay, so shall we explore that a little bit? Can you talk about your own uh, experience there and how it was for you or is for you the life? Yeah, yeah. so I'm just, I, I turned 60 this year. So when I, I was probably a little bit early coming into the, exploring the third act, but I had, I had, um, I, I, I had my, I did a PhD 10 years ago or so on developmental adult development theory and integral theory. And, and it was really emerging out of that, that I began to think, okay, this longevity thing is both a challenge and an opportunity, I suppose, for people. We have this opportunity to grow into something potentially bigger, more expanded, um, because we're living longer and our material needs in many cases are are already met so we were there's less of the maybe the struggle for the material survival uh, and greater opportunity then for people to explore can they really grow and expand in themselves in this third act because you know the infrastructure of careers falls away um, children have grown up and left um, so what what's left if you like What's what's next then? Yeah. Well, it may be it, there's this quest to, you know, and and I I it wasn't a particularly uh, novel insight from from me. You know, this was Jung wrote about this. Uh, yes, sure. The Indian tradition have always had those four big stages in life. Um, uh, so Erickson, so many writers have have written about the stages in life in in terms of how you're 
your own consciousness can expand and develop. So that's what interested me, really. I was less interested in the social changes and advocating mm -hmm. for, ex you know, extending pension ages or yeah. getting organizations to change their attitudes. You know, that's difficult, hard work. So I just began to sort of, and, and so that corresponded with my own inquiry, if you like, as to what my third act uh, was going to be. And uh, I have to say that I initially thought my third act was going to be the third act. And mm -hmm. I was going to, as I've done for the last five years, develop, promote that, run conferences, run transition programs, do coaching, all that kind of stuff. But now, actually, I'm not so sure. So mm -hmm. I'm now in a little bit of a kind of a, a pause period where um, it's, uh, it's, it's less clear to me, partly because it's, um, people love doing the work when they come to do the work. But to get them to come to do it at this age is very difficult. And I don't really want to be trying to encourage or convince anybody that they should necessarily engage in this internal inquiry. That you know, that's kind of almost none of my business. But if they do want to do it, I'm happy to facilitate it because um, uh, I, I can see the value of that. And uh, you know, the, the transition programs that I run are really just around those three questions of of you know the three temporal domains. You know, the the present, the past, and the future. Where am I now? I mean, that's a, that's a big question. <laughs> then how did I get here? Well, that's telling your story right from the beginning, you know? And then where am I going? That's sort of, you know, begin to use visioning and all sorts of different ways of exploring what, you know, creating something new and, and, and powerful in your life. But as I say, it's difficult to get people to come. Uh, they love it when they come. And I don't know whether it's because people at this age and stage feel like they should should have things sorted out or they should feel mm. they have come to or maybe many have but I also see a lot of people who haven't and who are just going on with a habitual out-of-date view as to what this stage of their life is about. So you think it's a, a bit of being ashamed to to show up and uh, admitting that I don't really know what to do uh, when I'm in pension or yeah, I, you know, that, that's, that's, that's quite well put. I, I think, um, you know, I noticed the people who come and they come into the group and we, we get together for two months or so. They love it. They love coming back and they say, I can't talk about this stuff with my family or with my friends. They'd all think, you know, because everybody, has the assumption as to what you're going to do and what you're going to be in this third act. So there, everybody's giving each other advice. Oh, you should do this. You must go there. You'll have great time. You'll have some, and, and they're much more fundamentally, they're wanting to ask questions about, well, who am I now? You know, what matters now? The and meaning. Like, what I've done all this other stuff. I'm 60 or I'm 55, I'm 65, 70. You know, what, what do I do now for the rest of my, like, you know, what what's makes, important? What makes sense? Yeah. What is the, what can be a meaning, no? Uh, of yeah, my what life. makes sense now? Yeah. 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 And I can relate to that because um, for, when my, when I was together with Mark and we created these shows, that made sense. And that was meaning uh, connected with us. And when he died, I, I thought, and now? And I had almost the whole year of, of a sort of a crisis. Shall I continue with these things? I did it the whole way long because it sort of helped me to, to, to structure my time. No, because I, it's like, like going in pension somehow when you lose a, a, a very yeah. close partner that everything goes, it's, it's not the same anymore as before. Yeah. And so you have to find out to re reconfigure yourself in some way. So it is, I think, very similar to, to having had a work life and all the time worked in this life and then stopped. I did, never had, you know, I was always a sort of what we call in German a life artist. I did a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that, but never, you know, a classical 
career with or, or job with eight hours in an office, uh, something like that. I never did it. So for me, uh, the transition from work life or not work life, there is no transition. I always have worked or never have worked, you know, I, I don't know, even this, you know, is it work? Is it yeah. not work? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, but the death um, and the search for meaning afterwards, that was, um, yeah, I, I can relate to how a person feels when they, the structures break away uh, and Often for most people, work is giving them structure, their life structure. Sure. In, you know? It gives them a structure. It gives them obviously financial reward. Uh, it gives them sociability, community, connectedness. Um, and as you say, a sense of definition of self. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you take away that infrastructure, that architecture, and then in many cases, you know, also family life changes fundamentally uh, for many people at the same time. It's, 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 it's a, you know, it really is a crisis of existence, an existential okay. crisis, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and where do you go to talk about that? I mean, where do you go to do that sort of reflective work? You know, you, you, people will talk to each other, I guess, but... Uh, so particularly a lot of men, you know, they haven't had that network of um, friends to have those conversations with. So they, they, they often have good company, friends for company, but not often friends for that kind of inquiry. I think perhaps, uh, I don't know, perhaps women are better able or equipped to, to sort of join that sort of. So the third act, interestingly, does get a quite a lot of men coming half and half or oftentimes more men than women mm -hmm. and uh, we, I mean it, it very quickly moves away from any gender difference because they're you know everybody's each male or female's third act is as different as it is between the men and the women you know it's it has nothing to do with it um, and in fact there's very little talk even about what you used to do because the purpose is really to sort of inquire as to what you might want to do and even more fundamentally what you might want to be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, who, exactly. Who, who, what, what, is, what am I now and what do I want to be? So, you know, when you ask me about my, for me, it was, you know, I, I, uh, the, I, I decided this summer to take just the summer off from doing any writing or any running any programs or courses uh, both to sort of sort out a few other things in our family life as best I could because I have I've four children as well you know when they're they're in their they they're young they're late teens early 20s you know mm -hmm. so they're still uh, it's, it's wonderful they're still around but it's it's a, I have so I have a very busy family life with myself and my wife and our four kids. So, um, uh, yeah, so I, I'm sort of coming to the end of the second act in terms of those responsibilities, um, but haven't fully moved on. And yes, yeah, so I'm looking for, looking at this, I'm bang smack in the middle of this thing, looking at 25 in, on average, you'd say, uh, years or 20, 25 years of hopefully active life and you say, well, what are you going to do? It's like a whole new period of life. It's not, I don't want to do what I used to do, but I don't want to go back to when you can't go back. So what are you? Who? <laughs> so you have to find some new underpinnings. And even if you would go back into what you used to do, so many people find when they have hit 50, they are not considered anymore to, to find a job. To, to I mean, the, the yeah. The enterprises don't take them seriously, as you said before. They don't care for them. And it's so strange because those people have accumulated all the wisdom and all the, the knowledge mm. which young people still have to, to get. So I find it strange that there is not a system of, um, how do you say, tutor, tutorship. Yeah. The older take uh, the younger ones and, 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 and teach them what they know. There are certain areas where the younger ones are much better, like in electronics and computers and so on. But there are many other things where the older have just a bigger experience. And 
I also see with people who come here, for instance, and tell me what, what I, I should do, you know? And I think, yeah, really, uh, uh, we don't need to invent the wheel again. I have already done that and I've tried out. And so, you know, so I, I find that often in the younger generation, there is this sort of tendency not to want to ask the older generations about their experiences, not to want to learn from them, but to think they know everything already. So uh, that's also a little bit of a problem when you as elder yeah. have something to share, whom do you share it with if, yeah. when they don't want? <laughs> it's very <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could think of previous generations where the, the next generation were in a sense apprenticed to the older generation and they learned mm -hmm. the skills and knowledge directly from them. Um, now, as you say, uh, in many cases, they just see that the older generation are out of touch with the rate of change and, uh, and they don't appreciate perhaps the assimilation of knowledge and experience and the value it has. And I don't have any answer for that because um, I just, yeah, I see that the value is, is greatly, is more placed, or seems to be more, it's more highly rated to have um, that technical knowledge uh, and that ability to, to work for long, such long hours. But the, you know, this, the willingness to, to, to listen to older, wiser, it's not, it's not highly valued. The whole notion of the elder, of the, is, is is not highly regarded and i think also it's partly because mo a lot of the older people fall into they regress rather than progress so they fall into the trap of just seeking entitlements and, and, and an entitled life and even the concept of retirement you know to retire you know it's uh, i know the root of it is retire in the french to mm. retire, to withdraw to a withdraw. place of mm. safety and seclusion. So it's not perceived as a dynamic period, as a progressive, as a developmental, as an, as an elder in the sense of older, wiser. Older, yeah, but not wiser. So we've lost that developmental trajectory. And I think the third act was an attempt to reintroduce that um, and say that this period wasn't about a retirement. It was... It was about a progression, a uh, developmental stage in life that offered all sorts of new opportunity to, you know, develop and expand oneself just beyond uh, the worldly side of things that you, that so preoccupy us in the second act. Because in this, and now, you know, what do you want more for at this stage? It's not more you want. It's, it's perhaps more meaning or more, more presence depth. or you know more a sense of beingness yeah and uh that's what that's what i, I had i'd sort of uh, that was my hope for the third act and uh, that it would create that but i i wouldn't say that it's it's not the world off its trajectory in any way it's, <laughs> i'm not i'm not overwhelmed by people being interested in it, which is interesting yeah, I mean, it's even worse when you would talk about death and dying and, and things like that, then even less people <laughs> would show up. That's, you know, has it maybe to do with the negation and with a uh, miraculous hope that it might not hit you, that for yeah. you it might be different and you never get old and, you know, have a problem with that and you never die at least, you know, so. Well, it, it is, it is interesting that it's, you know, in the, in the technology world uh, and in the medical world, increasingly death is seen as a, you know, our old age is seen as a disease. Yeah. So if it's a disease, then we can find a cure for it. You know, it's not, it's not the same as saying it's a natural occurring thing and we need to accept it and prepare for it and have a, have a good death. You know, it's more, oh my goodness, we have to find ways of prolonging it, of, of maybe even eradicating it, you know, as a disease. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Oh, gosh. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's in, in my 
view it's sort of stupid. It's understandable because you cannot every day uh, be around and think of your own death or something like that. But so to negate it in this way, it's also a little bit strange. And um, what I am noticing, it was in my own life, but also with other people, when they get older, they get more interested in spirituality, in yeah. these questions, who am I and what is life for? And this is a good thing, you know? And uh, for me, <laughs> at the end, the whole life is a preparation for death, for for a whole series of little transitions until we have the other big transition, you know? And I think with all things in life, it's good if you prepare yourself a little bit. I mean, you would never go in an exam without ever having heard about the topic, you know? Yeah. So, but with illness and death and relationships, by the way, too, and having children, uh, education, that, that um, seems to be that we have to know it out of the blue uh, without any preparation. So very strange, no? We learn so much yeah. stuff for all other sorts and for the really important things in life. We practically have to do trial and error, no? Yeah, and, and you know, so I had I have perhaps thought, and you know, this, there would be much more uh, openness and willingness in organizations to support people uh, who were contemplating, uh, you know, finishing their standard careers or, and that they would support that uh, inquiry that, you know, as to what they would want to do and be in this next stage of their life. But that, that there isn't, I haven't seen much of that. I mean, they, most organizations just pay for a one day course on, you know, how much money do you have? And, um, and you know, make sure to get the flu vaccine. You know, <laughs> and it's uh, it's 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 deeply superficial, really. Yeah, that's uh, when we talk about integral theory. We are so much located in the right-hand quadrants, you know, and still the left-hand quadrants are like, nah, yeah, they are. maybe they are, but oh, not important, you know. And we know that only when we have an, a balance between all those only then we are living in a, in a good way you know and it's no no wonder that politically we are at the end more or less psychologically as, as societies we are at the end yeah if you don't uh, recognize what's going on inside and uh, the need with the, the how can i say the souls are crying Mm. Of everybody, of children and young people, middle-aged people, old people, you know? and we pretend um, well, we're going on as usual and we, you have other hundred euros more, that will make you happy. <laughs> yeah. So it's about changing consciousness, in my opinion. Yeah, and, 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 and that exactly was the motivation originally that, you know, that, 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 that perhaps you know, that is the real reason that we're living longer is that we can grow and expand or grow up or expand ourselves or develop our consciousness so that we can begin to define and live a different way. And then that way, uh, this generation of third actors can be come more like, you know, traditional elders and traditional uh, models of how this next stage of life should be led. So, but you know, most of, I see, a, you know, it seems to be that the majority of, of older people don't really want to do that. Um, they want to stay, they want to stay, they want to get, they're getting more disengaged, not engaged, and um, feeling less in, welcome, feel less uh, connected. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess a lot of people have sorted out and they're okay with their own family life and their, their grandchildren are there. But in terms of being seeing the bigger picture, uh, there's a sort of a, a returning to a kind of a dependent consciousness rather than a, a more expanded inter-independent consciousness. So I'm wondering why you say returning. Has it ever been different? Because I, I think that, I think that, you know, that, you know, there's, if you look at the developmental trajectory, you know, for the, in that model of 
eldership or even in leadership, you call it statesmanship or something. It, it was the personal needs uh, were, were, you were aware of them, but they, were, they didn't take center stage. There was a much greater concern for the, the broader, bigger issues of the day, of the tribe, of the culture, of the time. And uh, a very active, participative uh, involvement in life family life, community life, um, social life. Um, and of course, you have some great examples of that. You look at, you know, people like Mary Robinson or, you know, these other people who are older, wiser, the Elders Council, these kind of organizations that really provide tremendous leadership uh, and uh, engagement in a very wide range of big issues. But a lot of, it's, it there, isn't, there isn't a natural step up. It's almost like when you come to the end of the second act, you know, it's more like a cliff and you fall off and you disappear. And socially, society wants you to stay out of things really rather than be involved. Exactly, see, si. yes. And uh, so my question is, how far has that to do with the levels of development? and that we have left mainly blue, the blue uh, stage of development where this was still uh, caring for elders was uh, normal. Not so much that the elders would reinvent themselves, but at least they were uh, respected. And then when we go to orange, which is mainly uh, today and, uh, and green, green, yeah, a little bit brings it back, but isn't it uh, dependent on the stage uh, of development which a person has reached in their second act, how they will then uh, behave in their third act? Yeah, but it's not just enough for the individual. You know, there needs to be cultural and social structures that support that. Because yeah, but we are, we are creating these cultural structures. So that would be uh, the job of, of us if we find it important and necessary. Isn't it? Yeah, no, I, I, I think, I, I, I think I, the other thing I'm beginning to realize, though, is that it, how difficult it is if you're left to do this work on your own. So the people that come to the groups, you know, it's like they, they're nearly afraid to tell anybody that they're doing this kind of work because it's, you know, in the, in the, in the, you know, in a, I have a little sort of model of, of the, the transition stages and, you know, the first one is, if you're going to do this kind of internal work, uh, this transition work or transformation, you know, the first stage is you need some sort of wake up call. There has to be some reason to do it. And that either comes from the outside in or the inside out. So it could be some sort of existential crisis internally, you know, search for meaning, purpose, what matters, or it could be just something happens in your life out externally in like, a loss of a partner or an accident or something that, you know, it forces you to, to address this or in a more traditional sense, you know, your loss of your job and your family grows up and stuff like that. The next stage is the search, you know, so you go on this, on the quest, you know, you're looking at all the, you're finding yourself in the self-help section of the bookshop on a Saturday afternoon, endlessly absorbing yet another, wonderful, insightful book on how you to develop yourself. And then the third stage is the struggle, you know, you, and that can go on for a long time where you eventually meet yourself on this journey. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you have to come to terms with something. You have to learn something or you have to let go of something. And of course, that's the most difficult thing because these things are so deeply rooted in us, perhaps from a very early period in life, emotionally attached uh, and don't want to give up. Um, but if you do, you know, there's the, the fourth stage is the breakthrough where you, be, you create this new sense of meaning or purpose, this new energy emerges. And the final stage then is the, is the kind of the integration stage and the return home. And oftentimes this is the most difficult. It's like in the hero's journey, you know, in Joseph mm -hmm. Campbell's. Because when you come back from the journey, you're the same, but slightly, but you're different. And you have a new sense of, but it's kind of fledging sense, you know, and you, it's still vulnerable, but you want to try or want to go or want to do. And those around you uh, may not welcome that change and they might try to sabotage it. 
I had a wonderful example of this. There was a lady who came on the course and she was, uh, she was about 60. She had been a principal in a, in a school and um, she'd been looking after everybody all her life, including all her children in the school. And she said that, uh, I asked her after about two, two months, so how are things going? You know, she said, oh, she said, uh, I went to see my mother recently who was still alive. And her mother looked at her and said in this kind of voice, are you still doing that course with that fellow up there? You know, and uh, so she was feeling threatened by this change that was going on. And then her daughter said to her, mum, mum, I was, and she, she had been up to see the other grandmother. And she said, granny said that, she said, you know, your mother has changed. Mm-hmm. And uh, we all laughed because she did feel a change had occurred. In, in, and she was now beginning to take back the reins and saying, look, the elder, the two elder ladies were assuming that once she retired, she was going to have all this time to look after them. Her children probably thought, you know, she's going to do everything for them as she'd always done. And her husband probably thought that. And she was thinking, you know, I now have permission to, to consider doing something different, to being something different. And she, you know, it, it was very courageous. She did. And she went on. And, and a year later, I, she came back to a program, to a, a catch-up session. And, and she had, she redefined. And uh, now she still looked after the, the elders and she still looked after the family, but she now had a new kind of direction that she had carved out for herself. And permission was the word that she really latched onto. She didn't believe she had permission to do it because there's no social structure to support that. Mm-hmm. There, was, there was no cultural support in her family. There was no language around having a new third act in your life that was just a, you know, about you expressing yourself and so on. So a lot of people, you know, they, they kind of fall upon it. But it is more more difficult when you don't have architecture, structures, social systems, language that allows you and supports you to do it. And that's just that's been my experience of it so yeah. far. That you know, you you can imagine you imagine the transition that occurs between the first and the second act in life. You know, when you when you're kind of growing up, you leave school, you're going to college, or you're learning a trade or a skill. It's like everybody's got a stake in your development. You know, your parents are pushing you, your hormones are pulling you. Uh, Society is willing to pay for you for all your education. Organizations will train you. Everybody is invested in your development. You come to the end of the second act, nothing. Mm -hmm. There are no structures, no language, no cultural support. It's basically you've got to figure it out on your own. Yeah. And of course, that's great. A lot of people can not do and do it very successfully, but a lot of others struggle with that. And um, they settle for something, you know, just to keep going. Yeah, I want to, to say something here because it's not only from the second to the, th- the third act. I had an interview this week with a, a woman from Montana in America, and she says she came out of a completely purple family. And... Uh, People who, she, she well came from an educated family. So when she wanted to go out and study, she became a lawyer. Her father was absolutely unhappy and everything, but she could. But she said she is interested in figuring out how it is when poorer people and less educated people, especially women, want to get out of this this tribe let's say mm. they don't get not only not supported but also hindered so there is some parallel here from mm. uh, the, the society the, you talk about society as a whole but there it is let's say the group in which they have grown up and in which they are embedded doesn't want you to become some something different or something mm. what we would say better you know and this is i think a, a trade all together in also in, in, in families that often uh, parents don't want that their children are smarter than themselves or something like that. And yes, it is difficult, but I think all growth, personal growth is difficult. Yeah. And everybody has first to decide for themselves that it is needed and then invest the energy, often also the money. 
and uh, and do something to 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 climb up uh, out of the ditch, let's say, <laughs> and and get a, a bigger worldview. So. I want only to have it more relativized, you know, that it's always difficult. With, um, I think what's the problem with the third act is that in our mindset, we are still expecting that women especially take care for others, take care for whoever is needing care, and that women are supposed to, uh, to sort of sacrifice their own um, their own wishes to, to the well-being of the others. And this, I would say, is a little bit a difference between men and women. And so the women need an extra encouragement. But often they find it among mm. other women of the same mindset, let's say. Certainly not of the women in your village who are, have uh, always done the traditional old age woman with 60 walking mm. along like this, you know. So it is in our... The image of an elder is still like it was 50, 60 years ago, I would say. Yeah. No? And I think uh, that's why we need to show up, why we need to show uh, people that we are fully, how do you say, fully fledged human beings with yeah. all the capacities you need. Maybe Absolutely. we cannot run 100 meters in five seconds. That's maybe a little bit of a difference. But the rest is there. We can do a lot. And... We have to show up and not hide. And this, this is one of the reasons why I do these things, because we need to, to encourage people, inspire people that they don't need to sit behind the television and wait that the day goes by, you know? Yeah, for sure. Hmm. And that's, you know, that's until the systems do change and until the culture does change, until the language changes. It takes time. Then, you know, it's, it's, it's worthwhile and it's beneficial to do this, even if there's not a huge audience for it now, because lots of people, you know, even when they hear it, I, I have this all the time, you know, they, they, they kind of, they dip in and then a year later they, they dip in again. And then maybe a year after that, they might ring to have a conversation. And, uh, you know, so it, it takes, particularly if you had a very, as you say, a very strong, uh, second act family life or, or community life or career where it's all been you know there's a lot of support around you a lot of structure and you, you then want to take this step on your own into something else it's um it's very challenging very challenging mm -hmm. but very possible and there, there's all sorts of roadmaps you know it's also it's also the evolutionary journey. It's not, it's you, once you, that's the other thing that when you do start, you, you're entering into a flow that is something that's bigger than, than your own life and your own, your own, uh, you know, your own community's experience. You're really tapping into something very big, and yeah, that's, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, and that's the stages of the ego development, you know, where you, you gradually grow beyond and, be, and then you merge into something else. You don't lose the sense of identity of the earlier stages, but you're not defined by them now. Whereas, whereas for most of us at difference at the earlier stages, particularly, you know, you're, you're, you don't, ha you don't have those stages. They have you. So it's sort of, and you can't see that. And yeah, yeah, sure. So when you talk to people about that, there's only so many that are, are ready to sort of and willing to engage in that. You know, others, re you know, were asking me for advice, you know, and I was thinking, well, how, how can I give you advice? I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out for myself. Like, uh, what, what would I know about your life? That, But I might be able to facilitate the inquiry. I might be able to, okay. you might be able to participate with another community of people exploring the same things and come to your own uh, and w one of the big things I do, Heidi, is I, bl I, I try to get everybody to not give any advice to each other. And that's a huge relief for everybody because it allows them then to, you know, just to open up and, and explore a bit more. Mm -hmm. The yeah. tendency to fix other people's problems is really not helpful because you, oh, feel, yeah. you feel like being dominated by... by and your own ideas and your own uh, approaches to things are sort of 
uh, diminished or uh, uh, even worse, uh, like dismissed. That's yeah, exactly what that's I, right. What I said because you know, there it's really they're all they're just fledgling ideas, and and you you nearly need to articulate them to. It might be the first time you've heard yourself say them. Mm -hmm. I wish I I'd like to, and we always try to use the first person as well because sure. you know when people you know, otherwise you just into you know telling society what it should do. Yeah. And, uh, tells so what you are saying is that we also need to explore new ways of communication, of being together. That's exactly uh, what what we need, in my opinion. No, explore co-creation in many ways. Completely, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was uh, wanting to tell you. It's now a public show, but why not say that? I had a conversation with Annette Kaiser, who is a spiritual teacher and a Sonia student, and there is also Thomas Steining and other people in this group. They have begun to collaborate in um, a project which is called Co-Creating Europe. Right. Yeah, and that's, I, I was thinking that might be something for you to participate because they uh, try really to, to, to integrate the whole human being and, and the cultures together in some way so that we can really co-create. And we were talking about Brexit and all the things like society at the moment is sort of separating, uh, you know, and we need to connect our forces for the... Uh, for coming together and not separation for uh, one oneness you can say in the spiritual world but it's both needed you know you need the spiritual insight that we are all one and that we artificially separate each other but it's 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 crazy you know and but also be active and do something in the world so that we we can have some impact on that and when you said before yeah we do that and there's only a few people coming but you know it's always like that all cultural cultural changes begin with a few people doing and insisting and doing and then there come some more and then there comes some more and bang at a certain moment the culture changes yeah. so i think what you are doing what i'm doing what they are doing is little pieces of cultural change yeah yeah so we don't need to give up. <laughs> we no. need to go on. <laughs> no. no, it's, uh, I, 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 no, no, you're right. You're right. I mean, you, you do, uh, sometimes, you know, you, you think, um, well, if I, if what I'm observing is really the reality of things, you'd think that more people who want to support, you know, wouldn't be more, would be more interested in it, you know, but it's, uh, you know, they, uh, it's it's you know I found I, I'm I'm now hopefully soon at a situation where I'm not going to be reliant on it financially because it, it isn't sustainable you know it it, it isn't um, it's not uh, yeah it's just not sustainable I mean lots of people have that experience when you're doing this kind of work it's very difficult to make it uh, to live from it yeah. but um, uh, so you know you. I, I sometimes get a bit discouraged by that because I hear uh, it's not that. like I'm charging a lot. It's not a, it's not it's it's not that, but it's it's the it's the value placed on it is is not very high. And yeah, no, yeah. and I even want to contest that. I don't think that the value is not very high. The people would see the value, but they have the hesitation. Mm. Should I really do that? Shall I? Oh, yeah. As I said at the beginning, I don't think it has anything to do with you and the content. It is just uh, this, let's say, natural psychological um, blockage of, 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 of trying new things or even yeah. of, of accepting help. Yeah. You know, you can even give, give help gratis, but then they wouldn't take it, you know? Yeah. So... Uh, we, we are often very good in giving, but not so good in receiving. Yeah. And that has, might also be connected with this idea, what you said before, that you will be overthrown, overloaded with good advices. And then you're feeling guilt. Why haven't I done it yet? Yeah. You know, 
for me, it's so when I hear now some of these, you know, uh, um, talks of people, and when they talk about you, 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 and tell me what I should do, I immediately stop now. Yeah. I don't yeah. listen to them anymore. That's for me, no. it's not, you know, I don't need your advice. I want to see what you have found out, what you yeah. have explored, so that I can learn something of it. But I don't want you to tell me what I should do. So I want to say with that, that probably many people, even if they don't say, but probably many people have this feeling of being taken for stupid and for, 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 for children who need to be educated. So if we don't find a different way of talking with people, I mean, all these people in the, in the developmental business, it's difficult to reach to reach others, uh, really. Well, I think the, the, the thing that also, I suppose, puts me off somewhat is the, is the promises that are being made. You know, the, oh, dear. You know yeah. the transforming, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do that for you, you know. Five uh, days uh, to reach happiness or yeah, something like it's, that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's very, it's, um, I mean, it's tremendous energy and enthusiasm and, and, and it's wonderful, but, um, but you know, the thing is, you know, people say, but Ed, you have to market this, you have to present this. And I'm saying, you know what, I'm finding it difficult to do that now. You know, I, I used to, in my working life, I would obviously, you know, market things and sell things, but I, I, I really don't feel like doing that with this anymore because it's, um, it's too precious almost. And also, I just can't say those things anymore because... I mean, it's it's just not true, you know. I I just can't imagine, um, you know. As I say, all you can do is offer it. I suppose facilitate the inquiry, and try and not, you know, interfere too much in somebody's life, and allow the the the, the, the you know allow it to come of its own accord. Um, so, you know what? Yeah. I can completely relate with the, to what you say because I can't market it anymore. It is a promise in five steps you get everything. Yeah. You know. But on the other hand, people seem to be so stupid to believe that. And then they get disappointed again, yeah. and again, and, and again, and again. And when there comes around a serious person who doesn't promise it, but says, you might get that if you put your own work in, you have 90% of probability. That doesn't sound for them so well, and so, so they don't come. They still no. want to be fooled. And, yeah. and you see in our political life, people want to be fooled because otherwise they wouldn't be you know, It's so true because every time I go to an organization, they want to know for sure what are the, you know, what are the benefits of the program and what are people going to get. And I'd say, well, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't say because, you know, everyone's different. But that just doesn't work. That no. doesn't wash because they then can't measure it. They can't manage it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very frustrating. I, I, I did one. I, there was one particular seminar I was running uh, at a university. And uh, the, this, this young, young people were, were kind of this new young lady got involved with the coordination of it. She wanted me to submit everything in advance, you know, as to what I was going to say. And I said, I really, I couldn't tell you what I'm going to say. And I really don't know how it's going to go until I turn up on the day and get a sense of the people in the room and what they're w interested in, in, in exploring. I can give you a framework, a set of questions that I will ask but as to the content and, and where it goes and what they get out of it. I mean, it's, when you put it like that, it's a ridiculous question because how could I possibly know? And the problem with trying to know is that you then interfere with the process itself, which is none of your business, you know? You're just the choir master trying to put a structure that has, you know, that isn't your content. It's just, a, as I say, a framework of inquiry. And you try and create the space where people can inquire at their own level in their own time with the support of others. And and when you do that, then it's very nice and people really uh, find it a great benefit. But they do have to get over this notion that you're going to set step one step, you know, that you're going to provide this structure that's going to lead to this outcome. 
which is fine, you know, for making cars and things, but it's not really great in this internal space. Exactly, because it is a transportation from the right uh, le right quadrant uh, yeah. tools to the left, and that yeah. doesn't doesn't really work. Yeah. yeah, but you know there are many of us, and we will figure it out at the end. So don't get it discouraged. We, no, we no, no, thank do you. Something, and what we uh, really need to do is to get a connection and collaborate uh, between all, because as alone you you get discouraged. You know. That's, yeah. That's, that's the thing. So I would invite you to, to come to other panel discussions and whatever, and uh, we talk about these things. We okay. have done uh, almost an hour now, and so coming back a little bit <laughs> to the third act, I would uh, uh, ask you to, yeah, to, mm -hmm. to, to tell me a little bit what you haven't told me yet, <laughs> or told to the people. So the most important things which you think would be the result of the work or of the recognition of needing to deal with the third act and maybe go and see your, your courses. I think the, the, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just distracted. I need to get a, my power cord for this computer. It's running out of energy here. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'll get that in a second. But I think the most most important thing is, you know, people need to come to this, you know, at, with their own curiosity when they're ready. Because exactly. otherwise you come and you'll just be annoyed by what's, what's going on. And uh, you'll feel... Uh, you'll feel I'm annoying and the questions are annoying and the other people are, you know, something wrong with them or, <laughs> or something, you know. You, you need to reach the point in your own development or in your own inquiry where you're ready to, to let go of some of your assumptions and beliefs and, 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 and recognize that really there's something big has changed. And, uh, and something to gain. Yeah. And as a result, this is a really a new phenomenon of our time. Perhaps never before have so many people lived for so long. So it's a huge new opportunity uh, and, and something really worthwhile. I mean, you know, you go to college for three or four years, you, you, you train for a long time, you do apprenticeships for a long time. If you thought you really were going to have this new third act in your life, then how would you prepare for it? And how much of your time and your resources would you allocate to it? And uh, where would you go to begin that inquiry process? And uh, I mean, everybody's at a different stage in that inquiry, but so that was what we we're trying to do is to create a sort of structures that would allow people enter into an open inquiry um, yeah. and to support them when they would come up against some of their own defenses. I mean, and these defenses are, I mean, these are serious defenses you come up against. You know, these are early in life defenses. And, uh, you know, there's, but it's great relief to begin to, to maybe address them and let them go and free you up for the next stage and let go of the assumptions you had about this and the assumptions about that. As you said, so many people living in a, in a sort of 50 years ago paradigm about what this stage and age and stage is like, of life is like. They want all the benefits, of course, which is longer life, but there's some consequences to it. And I think the yeah. consequences are that you perhaps need to, I don't know, I don't wish to say what you should do. No. I don't, but you know what I mean? That there, there are consequences and perhaps one of them is that it's worthwhile to begin an inquiry into that. And exactly, because there is much to gain and not yeah. only to lose. So yeah. very much to gain and to explore and, and yeah, but I think everybody sooner or later, almost everybody will be ready to with, to be engaged with these topics, and then they know where to go. There are you know possibilities. So before your computer dies, uh, I want to wrap up and say thank you, and uh, we we meet again and talk about the third act and the development of the third act. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very well, thank you very much. I really and enjoyed all, the chat. Yeah, and still say your website. Um, oh, yeah, the third act.ie. www.thethirdact.ie. 
IE means? Uh, well, IE is Ireland. Ireland. So I'm, I'm based in Ireland. Yeah, that's oh, the domain okay. of Ireland. Wonderful. So when you are in Ireland, you know where to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.